So we're gonna have Neville Fernandez from our office come in and talk about renewable jet. So we're gonna go from the ground up to the sky for a few minutes here with Neville, so welcome. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. And uh, I'm so delighted that you've taken the time out of your day to come and learn about renewable diesel and how you can support the fight against climate change. And so, so very warm welcome for me also. So I've been involved in business development and business management of renewable diesel since 2006. And that was the very start of renewable diesel commercialization. And over the past 12 years, I've had the great privilege and pleasure of working with many of you. And together, we have reduced the carbon intensity of the road transportation in California. So thank you very much for that. What I'd like to talk to you about today is aviation, air transportation, and the need to do exactly what we've done with road diesel in aviation. So the emissions from aviation is a very significant source of greenhouse gas emissions. It accounts for 2% of global GHG emissions and 10% of all transportation emissions. And in fact, if aviation were a country, it would be the seventh largest emitter of greenhouse gases after China, USA, Russia, India, Japan, and Germany, and then would come aviation. And av aviation is growing at a rate of 5% per year, the movement of both goods and people. That, that's a doubling of air travel in 15 years at that rate. And the Boeing Corporation estimates that in 20 years, there'll be twice as many airplanes as they are today. So it continues to grow because of demographic changes, because of increased prosperity around the world, because of cheaper airfares. And the environmental, environmental impact of growing aviation, growing air transportation, will continue to increase. But the good news is that the industry realizes that it must become more sustainable in order to grow, to be allowed to grow. And the industry is doing a lot of very positive work to make aviation more sustainable. Airplanes being built out of new materials are lighter. Jet engines are becoming more efficient. Airports are changing their procedures, changing the way they fuel their ground fuel equipment, allowing or, or enabling power and cooling to park planes so that the planes don't have to burn jet engines in their auxiliary power units. Ascent and descent patterns are changing, allowing, airports, uh, allowing airplanes to climb and descend, uh, burning less jet fuel. And infrastructure changes, navigation changes, are allowing airports to, to change their flight paths and fly more directly in instead of zigzagging as they try to find uh, radar stations. So there's a lot being done to reduce the carbon footprint of aviation. But jet fuel has to be part of that solution. Renewable jet fuel must be part of that solution because as Richard mentioned, he has a lot of options when he looks at his road transportation. He can use hybrids, compressed natural gas, liquefied natural gas, hydrogen. Those options aren't available for, for airplanes, at least not in the foreseeable future. So renewable jet fuel must be developed, it must be deployed in order to contribute to lowering the carbon intensity of air transportation. And renewable jet fuel is here today. There are five approved alternative and renewable jet fuels. And those are approved by the American Society of Testing and Materials. And Neste's renewable jet fuel is one of those fuels. We meet the ASTM standard 7566 for renewable jet fuel. And our technology, the next BTL technology, which Jeremy described, can produce renewable jet fuel in the same assets that we produce renewable diesel and from the same sustainable feedstock that Dane described. 
in addition to being a low carbon fuel, renewable jet fuel is also very clean burning because it has no aromatics, it has no sulfur, so particulate emissions, dioxide emissions are very much reduced, are greatly reduced. We first commercialized renewable jet fuel in 2011, just after ASDM approved the spec for this renewable jet fuel. Lufthansa used the fuel to fly over about 1,200 planes, 1,200 flights, and the results during that test period were phenomenal. In addition to reducing, the, the, the jet fuel was used at a 50% concentration, and in, in addition to reducing the carbon emissions over the life cycle by 1,600 tons or 1,500 tons, Lufthansa actually got 1% better fuel economy. There were zero quality issues. The, the planes ran on, on commercial flights, not test flights, for a period of six months. The next milestone that we helped to support was last year. We put renewable jet fuel into the existing fuel hydro system at Oslo Airport. So we put it in the same fuel system that petroleum fuel goes in, the petroleum jet fuel goes in. And we showed that Neste can deliver renewable jet fuel into the fungible system in a very efficient and cost-effective way. And going forward, we have some really good news. As we develop renewable jet, we are working now on a new fuel, a new specification. And it's, it will be produced by the hydro-processing technology, our next BTL technology. And it's very similar to what we've been producing for jet. But, it, but this fuel will have a slightly higher freezing point and a slightly different viscosity profile. It'll be used at a lower blend rate, so about 10 to 15% instead of 50%. But the big advantage will be is that it'll be much more efficient to produce. And many other producers, Neste and others, who can hydro-process fuels, hydro-process vegetable oils to fuels, will be able to produce this new fuel, which we're calling Hefa Plus. That's a generic name. And with the increased supply, we do anticipate that even at lower blends, we, we, airlines will be able to have large availability of this and the pen penetration of renewable jet fuel will increase in the pool. And that'll serve to lower uh, the carbon intensity of aviation. So we're working hard with Boeing on that. The, we hope to get the specification later this year and that'll, that should enable commercialization, subject of course to economic uh, considerations as early as 2018 or 2019 of this new fuel. Um, I'm, not a, I'm not the regulatory expert, Dane is, but the, to enable widespread use, the California Air Resources Board has now announced that it is considering renewable jet fuel as an opt-in into the low carbon fuel standard, meaning that there's no obligation for producers or importers of jet fuel to, to import renewable jet fuel or to buy carbon credits. But if blenders or, or, or airlines use renewable jet fuel and producers produce renewable jet fuel, they can generate these carbon credits. And of course, that'll, that'll put it on the uh, same economic basis as renewable diesel, incentivizing the production and use. So let me, let me uh, summarize the story about renewable jet and the, new, the need for renewable jet fuel. Aviation industry continues to grow. It must grow sustainably. There are many options with regard to airplanes, airports, engines, and operating procedures, but there are very few options with regard to the fuel. We need a sustainable, liquid, renewable jet fuel. I have a challenge for all of you in this room. You have all been very active with renewable diesel. 
and the opportunity for renewable jet fuel, the first movers for renewable jet fuel, will have a tremendous opportunity, economic opportunity, be it their PR they create, the brand image, the opportunities for more revenue streams as they attract more corporate and business travelers who want air travel to be more sustainable is huge. And my challenge to you is how, do, how can we help support that? If I have one last minute, I'll end with a quote just as Richard did. It's not my quote, but I heard it earlier this week. It was a quote from uh, former Secretary of State Hillary Clinton. She was visiting San Francisco earlier this, earlier this week. And uh, she said it in a, in a political context, but I think the same applies to climate change. And Mrs. Clinton said, uh, I hope I get this right, uh, resist, insist, persist, and enlist. And I think that applies very well to the challenge we face with uh, climate change. We should resist any efforts to backslide on climate change policy or, and, and allow us to revert back to uh, petroleum fuels instead of looking for alternative fuels. We should insist that our companies, our suppliers, and even our customers become more sustainable in their behavior and in their operations. But we should persist in our passions and our beliefs, and finally enlist not only ourselves, but other stakeholders to, to join us in this in this fight for the climate change. And uh, for the sake of, of leaving a better planet for our children and our grandchildren, I think it'll be well worth the effort. So again, I thank you very much. I'm happy to take any questions, Dane, or we can do that at the end. Thank you.